Hello and welcome to the General's Reviews. I'm Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80 from the Full Force Podcast, and I'm joining Justin Bell from What's on Joe Mind and General's Joes to bring you this review of the G.I. Joe Collectors Club FSS4 Pathfinder. Before Justin takes a look at the figure, let's go into the history of the character from his first appearance through to now. The first version of the character was released in the US in 1990. He was a completely original build and contained some pretty serious accessories. His weed whacker was the main standout, but he was also given two hip-mounted machine guns that were belt-fed from his backpack. No jungle would get in the way of this extreme gardener. The figure had a non-removable hat and a cool camo pattern colour scheme on his pants. Despite the odd accessories and rather random character design, he became one of the main leads in the Deke cartoon series. He was in most of the episodes and got plenty of screen time and action. That's what ambush needs to learn. He was voiced by Gary Chalk, who was also famous for the voice of Optimus Primal from the Beast Wars cartoon, amongst other things. The same version of the figure was released in Europe on single card and a Woolworths exclusive three pack in the UK with Bullhorn and Night Creeper in 1992. Wait, we've had Bullhorn, Pathfinder, and the repainted Night Creeper with the Ice Ninja in this FSS so far. Coincidence? Yes, it probably is, but I am counting all three figures as a UK Europe homage. That makes six figures in total for FSS4 with Outback, Sneak Peek and Jammer. Rule Britannia. In 2001, we get another version of the original figure in a brand new colour scheme with a repainted ore striker. This time his hat, jacket and pants are a very dark blue and his undershirt is dark grey. He comes with all of the same accessories as the original, only this time they're all black. The exact same figure is released again in 2004 with the Vamp, Twin Battle Gun, Chief Torpedo version 2 and Big Brawler version 4 for the Valor vs Venom line. He also featured in the US TV commercials and in other media such as trading cards and the fairly recent G.I. Joe Battleground app game. The FSS version Justin is looking at today is only the third version of the figure and homages the original iteration of the G.I. Joe's second favourite jungle specialist. So without further ado, here is Justin with the review. This is Justin from General's Joe's and I'm taking a look at another General's Joe and Tell for the G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service 4.0. This time we're taking a look at well, part of the third shipment of figures from that figure subscription service. It's the Jungle Assault Specialist codename Pathfinder. Originally released in 1990, this version of Pathfinder is an updated modern version of that classic figure. They went with a vintage style card as they typically do, which is interesting because Pathfinder being released in 1990 actually had a blue digital background originally but they stuck with the old style, kind of artistic, painterly, red and yellow explosion, which is nice in a way. It kind of blends with all the other vintage style updates that they've done, uh, even though it doesn't look necessarily 100% accurate to how he looked in 1990. The presentation is terrific. It looks like the package art itself is probably a photoshopped uh, mock-up of the original art. They kind of altered some things. The original art actually had his little uh, hip-mounted cannons firing off in different directions. His left hand was holding one of the handles of those cannons, and now they've kind of photoshopped that out and had him holding the little axe that he comes with, which is a pretty cool touch. Uh, they've kept the little weed whacker in there, um, but they did obviously do some changes in Photoshop in order to kind of conform that original vintage art into something more modern, which is a really, really nice job. They did that pretty effectively. You can't tell that a big honk and hip-mounted machine gun that was normally right here has been completely removed, uh, and same with on this side, too, and, and that left arm has been totally reshaped to hold that axe. It's a very nice touch. They did some color alterations here and there as well. Added a little holster right there. So they have made some changes and uh, they did it pretty effectively. You can't really tell just by looking at it. Um, it's got the Jungle Assault Specialist right here with codename Pathfinder right there. GIJoClub.com exclusive there. You can see the figure presented very well and of course the photoshopped art over on the left hand side. It's a really nice looking package. Uh, blends very nicely with the rest of the releases that the G.I. Joe Collectors Club has done, not to mention the 2007 through 2009 25th anniversary releases too. And here's the back of the package, and we get essentially a pretty big close-up of that modified Photoshop art, and you can really get a good look at that left hand, how it was changed to hold that axe, and the guns were removed. Uh, again, looks very nice. You can see the G.I. Joe Club exclusive 4-05. This is the fifth figure in the figure subscription service 4. And it's got its file card right there, too. And I believe it's pretty closely reminiscent of the original 1990 file card. That's typically what the G.I. Joe Collectors Club does. 
is basically translate that that old uh, old text to the new cards. But overall, I'm very happy with the presentation. Pathfinder is one of those characters that is kind of obscure, a character that I really dig. I, I didn't really like him in 1990. I like him a lot more than I did back then now. And I'm kind of glad that the Collection Club is dipping into that era of G.I. Joe. They've got Pathfinder and Bullhorn both coming out in this uh, figure subscription service, which is really cool to see they've done topside previously. I'm hoping we'll see maybe some Ambush or maybe even Captain Gridiron at some point before things go away at the end of the year. But uh, time will tell. But anyway, this is a look at Pathfinder. This is the packaging for Pathfinder. A very nice job by the J.I. Joe Collectors Club. And we'll tear into this thing and keep going and taking a look at the figure itself. This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com with another Generals Joe and Tell. This time we're looking at the figure subscription service 4.0 Pathfinder, a figure recently released from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club that is a modern update to the 1990 I hesitate to use the word classic because uh, in my mind 1990 is not necessarily a classic vintage, but when you look back that was actually uh, 26 years ago and I am officially old at this point as are most of you watching, so um, got to learn to deal with that. But as you see, this is Pathfinder. He's a pretty nice looking figure. Anybody who's familiar with the 1990 version will immediately recognize the character, even though the J.J. Collectors Club did use all reused parts here. It's got uh, 30th Anniversary Lifeline's head, uh, 30th Anniversary slash G.I. Joe Retaliation uh, Quinn, torso and arms, and the legs from the G.I. Joe Retaliation, G.I. Joe Trooper, I believe. Every time I go out on a limb and try to do some parts identification, I invariably screw something up. So please, by all means, leave me a comment if I messed anything up there. Uh, but I believe those are the parts combinations that they used in this case. As a result of using the Lifeline head, they gave him a removable hat. Something that came with, originally came with um, Recondo, I believe. And a backpack that falls off way too easily, as you can see. One of the gripes I have about the figure. Uh, the backpack is actually from the Pursuit of Cobra Jungle uh, Duke, which is cool. It's a great backpack. I like the little elastic straps they've got going down here. Kind of um, adds a little touch of realism, makes it look like there's actual straps for the backpack. Um, he does have a little flashlight that also goes inside, um, which is a nice touch. He comes with a machete. Comes with a little axe that you can see right there. And comes with a heavy machine gun. Uh, unfortunately, they they couldn't, from a financial perspective, really couldn't tool up the little balls on the hips. That that would re require some either pretty advanced accessory uh, design and, and tooling or a tool and retooling of the lower torso. And that's not something that is really feasible with a figure subscription service. So to compensate for that, they gave him a gray heavy machine gun, uh, M249, I believe it is. Uh, all of my... General Joe's faithful readers know how how accurate my depictions of various weapons are, so uh, take that with a grain of salt as well. You know, I, I, I can't identify figure parts. I can't identify weapons. You know, what the hell am I doing doing G.I. Joe reviews? I ask, my question, I ask that same question of myself uh, way too often. But um, as you can see, the, the figure itself is got pretty much all modern parts, um, all of them from the 30th anniversary slash G.I. Joe retaliation era, which means... The uh, articulation is great. He's got a great range of motion pretty much everywhere. As you can see, he's, he's, I still have him holding that weed whacker. Uh, I just can't get away from it. It's uh, Along with the hip-mounted weapons, um, it's kind of Pathfinder's trademark. So it makes sense that they included it. I'm glad they included it. Uh, it's really a, a nice you know, callback to the 1990 original. I don't believe it's something they tooled new for this. I, I suspect the tooling existed out there somewhere. Um, I may be wrong on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure. I mean, obviously, they released Pathfinder a number of times between, you know, kind of in the early 2000. Uh, a number of times? Well, at least once. I don't know if that counts as a number of times. Um, again, my history is a little bit muddy. You'll have to excuse me. It's early in the morning. As you can see, he does come with that weed whacker. He can hold it very well. He's got a nice little two-handed grip. The, his hand fits around the handle extremely nicely. It's a very cool little accessory, makes Pathfinder pretty unique. Um, the vest is a nice look. It's a little bit big, a little bit, uh, the plastic's a little stiff, but it's not too bad. Uh, he's got a little pistol in his holster, which isn't quite crammed down there all the way, but it does fit really well. One, one of the greatest kind of, I don't want to say inventions, but one of the greatest uh, changes in recent time was the ability to get these weapons and these holsters in this perfect middle ground where the holster's not too big, the weapon's not too small, and it, it fits in there really perfectly, but doesn't ruin the aesthetic of the figure. Also, one thing I also want to point out about the figure is the leg camouflage. It is 
pretty fantastic. You can look right there. Very nicely detailed, very accurate to the 1990 original. Um, it's a really, uh, really elaborate, really nicely decoed figure. Uh, obviously, the, the leg camouflage is a pretty unique aspect of Pathfinder as well. I do have some, some gripes about the removable hat. I understand kind of what the Collector's Club was going for there, but, um, you know, the results are a little bit mixed. You know, the Rakondo hat was obviously not designed to fit on the Lifeline head. It does fit okay. It's not terrible, um, but it can fall off sometimes. I actually find, I have it set this way because that's more vintage accurate, but um, I find that it actually fits better if you swap it around like that. Um, I just think that sits down lower on his head and fits a little bit better. So I prefer that, but it does take away a little bit from the vintage accuracy. It just depends how anal retentive you are, I guess, and how much you care what, what side of Pathfinder's hat is folded. But anyway, that's a look at the figure itself. And next we will take a look at him next to the 1990s original and compare and contrast. All right, now looking at the 1990s original version of Pathfinder, which you will see on the right-hand side compared to the modern version, you can see from color perspective... Things are lined up pretty nicely. I do have a little dirty secret, and that is somebody, as somebody who's been collecting G.I. Joes for 34 years now, um, my O-ring collection is getting pretty scary. These guys just sit in a drawer, essentially, but as you can see, there's a little bit of discoloration going on here. Uh, if I breathe on him wrong, his O-ring has snapped, so he will uh, break apart into a dozen different pieces. So um, we're going to try to avoid that. But as you can see, just from a color, looking at it from a color um, perspective. The, the paint apps here are really nicely done. Uh, the color matches pretty well. Uh, that shade of blue and light brown against the black. Uh, the vest matches pretty nicely too from both an aesthetics and a color perspective. Um, I didn't swap the hats back around so you can see his, his hat fold is on this side where his hat fold is on that side. So every one of you anal retentive vintage purists right now is ripping their hair out, so I apologize about that. Again, as I mentioned, one of the major differences here is this version of Pathfinder has these two little knobs on the hip, which um, let him kind of hook two pretty large um, machine guns on each hip, which is a really neat function. I really liked that. It would have been cool if the Collector's Club could have done that on the modern version. I understand why they didn't. To compensate for that, they kind of gave him a pistol on his holster and um, the heavy machine gun that I mentioned previously. So uh, as you can see, you know, from just looking at it color-wise and overall design-wise, you know, the, the J.I. Joe Retaliation Trooper legs do a good job of approximating these baggy pants. And ah, 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 ah. All right, take it easy there, Pathfinder. Uh, and the Lifeline head does a good job of mirroring those the, the sunglasses. But all in all, it's a pretty good match uh, looking at it color-wise. And if you had this up on the shelf, you could easily tell it was Pathfinder. And that's the General's Joe and Tell look at the 1990 Pathfinder, the update from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service. I think the club did a really good job approximating the vintage look. I have a couple complaints, notably the loose-fitting backpack and the hat that kind of flops off at a moment's notice. But by and large, this is a pretty decent update to the original, and I'm really glad the Collectors Club is dipping into 1990. The 1990 era of G.I. Joe... Uh, was one that I actually didn't really appreciate as a kid very much. Uh, they were all new characters, all pretty unfamiliar to me, uh, and their introduction in the Deke uh, animated series did them no favors. So I didn't find myself really latching on to any of them. I've learned to appreciate the 1990 series a lot more now as an older collector and seeing all the interesting accessories and all the new characters, all the fresh blood. Uh, that was pretty cool to see, uh, kind of looking back in time seeing that not every figure was another Snake Eyes or Duke or um, whatever new iteration. They all kind of looked like evolutions of those classic characters. A lot of people say, you know, Pathfinder was kind of an updated Rakondo. You had Free Fall, who could have been an updated Ripcord, so on and so forth. Sub-Zero might have been an updated Snowjob slash Blizzard. A lot of characters in that series could have been modern tweaks on the classic versions without just releasing new versions of those classic characters. It's kind of a new take, and it's something a lot of us are wanting to see these days from Hasbro. Uh, time will tell if that happens or not, but uh, meanwhile, the figure subscription service 4.0 has another pretty good figure on their hand with Pathfinder, and uh, I really think it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's really well, well articulated, uh, nicely designed. Uh, again, it is just a vintage update, which I'm not always extremely enthusiastic about, but uh, in this case, they did a pretty good, jo good job, and it's what collectors have been asking for, so who can fault them for that? So thank you once again for watching another General's Joe and Tell. Thank you for Chris, to Chris McLeod from the Full Force Podcast for all of his help putting these together. 
once again, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. Please like the video. Leave me a comment if you think there's some stuff I could improve. Uh, I'm trying to just get bigger and better. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching this review by Justin Bell of GeneralsJoes.com and What's on Joe Mind, and from myself, Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic80 from The Full Force. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think on any of our numerous social networking platforms. Goodbye, and see you next time for another Generals Review.